This is a daily space update for September 28, 2008. After three disappointing failures, SpaceX finally tasted success with its Falcon Launch launch vehicle today. With the fourth Falcon launch, SpaceX became the first private company to orbit a satellite with a liquid-fueled rocket designed and manufactured entirely in-house. The flight also sets the stage for the larger Falcon 9 vehicle, which is on track to have its inaugural rocket delivered to Cape Canaveral by the end of the year. After a smooth countdown, the first stage Merlin engine blazed to life. After being held back for several seconds while the engine built up thrust and all operating parameters were verified normal, Falcon 1 lifted off at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and quickly rose into the sky. There were none of the last-minute holds or launch aborts that bedeviled the previous three launches. Two and a half minutes after liftoff, the first stage exhausted, exhausted its fuel supply and was cast free to fall back to the ocean. The modifications to the separation sequence made after the third Falcon failure paid off, and five seconds after cutoff, the first stage separated cleanly and fell away, followed by ignition of the Kestrel second stage engine. Thirty seconds later, the eleven and a half foot long clamshell protective fairing over the payload separated in two and also fell away. The Kestrel engine burned for about seven minutes, placing the upper stage and payload simulator into an orbit with a low point of 205 miles and a high point of 404 miles. Before launch, SpaceX had targeted an orbit with an apogee of 426 miles, but the company is happy with the accuracy of insertion. The orbital inclination is tilted 9.3 degrees to the equator, precisely as planned. Several minutes after cutoff, the Kestrel engine restarted for a short burn to circularize the orbit at an altitude of almost 400 miles. The Falcon 1 rocket is approximately 70 feet tall, with a ma maximum diameter of 5.5 feet. The rocket's first stage is powered by a single Merlin 1C regeneratively cooled engine. This was the second flight of the Merlin 1C engine. It burns refined RP-1, which is highly refined kerosene, with liquid oxygen as the oxidizer. At liftoff, the rocket produces 78,000 pounds of thrust, enough to lift the 61,000 pound rocket. At ignition, the rocket is held down until nominal operating conditions are verified before hydraulic jacks release the vehicle to begin its ascent from the island launch site. The first stage is designed to be recoverable. A thermal protection system protects the stage as it re-enters the atmosphere, and then it descends into the ocean by parachute, where a recovery boat stands by waiting to retrieve it for cleaning and reuse. Unfortunately, it appears the stage this time was destroyed upon re-entry. Engineers did not have enough time to beef up the insulation outside the rocket so it would survive the stress of re-entry. A single SpaceX Kestrel engine powers the Falcon 1 upper stage. The second stage engine produces a vacuum thrust of 6,900 pounds and powers the vehicle for the remainder of ascent to orbit. Kestrel is pressure fed, eliminating the complexity and risk of using turbo pumps. Unlike the Merlin 1C, the engine is ablatively cooled in the thrust chamber and nozzle throat. The nozzle bell employs radiative cooling, whereby the heat that's generated passes through the nozzle wall and is radiated into the vacuum of space. Today's successful launch marks a milestone in the commercial space industry. Since the early 1980s, numerous companies have tried to develop their own low-cost launch vehicles. History is painted with names like Starstruck, Space Services Incorporated, American Rocket Company, Rotary Rocket, and others who tried to reach the holy grail of the launch business but fell short. Now that SpaceX has a first success under its belt, the company must work to build a long-term track record of reliability, beginning with the next flight, a commercial mission with the Malaysian Razakset, which may fly next January or February. Then it's on to the much larger Falcon 9, a heavy lift vehicle featuring nine Merlin engines in the first stage. The inaugural Falcon 9 is on track for delivery to SpaceX's launch site at Cape Canaveral, Florida by the end of the year. The company is in the midst of renovating the former Titan IV launch pad, Space Launch Complex 40, to accommodate the Falcon 9. 
Renovations include the installation of liquid oxygen and hydrogen storage facilities and construction of a hangar for horizontal pre-launch integration of the vehicle and satellite payloads. The first Falcon 9 is expected to lift off from Cape Canaveral sometime in the second quarter of 2009. And this has been a daily space update for September 28, 2008. You can listen to our archive of updates by going to dailyspaceupdate.com. And for more space news and multimedia, visit the Spacearium at www.spacearium.com or spaceflightnews.net. Thank you for watching and listening, and be sure to check back for our next Daily Space Update.